and welcome to the Emmaus Athletic Podcast. I'm your host, Shane Douglas. I'm here with Matthew Tomlinson. What's up, everyone? Matthew is a, a, a fellow uh, co, co-coach for the uh, Emmaus men's basketball team, so a uh, lot to look forward to there. We're just starting this podcast to give you guys information and uh, a, a look within our Emmaus teams here with volleyball, soccer, our cross country t- cross country team and basketball men's and women. So um we want to do a weekly podcast where we just give you a, a highlights and recaps of the game and uh, like I said give you an insight. Um we are 3 weeks behind. So, so we got a lot of ground to cover. A lot of ground to cover, so we're going to try to make this quick uh for you guys, but let's get started with uh one of the uh more hyped teams on campus which is a soccer team uh we haven't really had a spark within the team for a while but recently this year we have we're above 500 percent in, in, in wins and things are looking really good for the team this year we're at 500 we're at we're 500. two two and one so far this two, season. two and one yeah so we have two wins two losses and a tie we have a win against calvary seven zero to win against ozark eight to four we lost to manhattan three to one which is a heartbreaker. Don't really want to talk about that too much. But and then we lost to Eureka ten to one and tied Barclay four four. Yes. And you were at that Barclay game. I was. What do you have to say about that? I it was a it was a great game. It was uh it was actually funny because there was a game before and after and it rained before and lightning delayed after, but our our weather was perfect. It's perfect. It was perfect. It, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I hear it was, it was that was a heartbreaker. Barclay was ranked number nine in the nation going into that game. They were, and they just previously lost to Faith uh, before that. But um, our boys were hungry for a win, and they went in there trying to trying to prove something, and came out with a tie. No one really likes ties, uh, but better than a loss. Yeah, Coach Brown, the previous uh, head head coach for the soccer team, would always have a saying for ties, um, and he just made us all not like ties. No one likes ties. No but, one likes ties. Uh, so they're hungry for another win, and they got some games going coming up the next week or so. Uh, we're only halfway through the season, but let's talk about this Emea soccer team. A lot of hype behind us, a lot of uh, excitement with the team here. Uh, I want to I want to start with keeper Jacob Bowder, starting keeper, making his return to the team after how many years? Two years. Two year return, mm-hmm. and uh, he's not as much in like nothing against Jacob. I love him. He's my brother. He he's not as in shape as he once came in, but but the confidence he's playing, the with. confidence he's playing, Ooh. he's 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 playing much better than he did before. He's playing really good, you know. And and then you have Eli uh, Dremski, his backup uh, from the land of Canada. Oh, Canada! And he just made his first start this past game against Barkley. Against Barkley, and he played very well. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I hear. And he he there's a lot of upside going forward with him. Uh, He's starting to get more confident, just learning about keeper. He never played keeper before. He's never played soccer before, and he's playing. And he gets in right away and makes an impact, mm-hmm. which is really cool to see. It is cool. And, like, speaking of, like, those players who um, don't really – they have experience playing soccer, but not too much. Let's talk about Caleb Myers. Caleb yeah. Myers – Yeah, Caleb yeah. grew up playing soccer his whole life, but never mm-hmm. played competitively, Mm-mm. joined the team, and he's making a huge impact on defense. Yeah. It's really cool to see that. He was he was a little little – not he was a little unsure about should I join the team should I not and he joined the team and mm-hmm. only I only hear good things from him especially from the captains and mm-hmm. Zach Ort uh, one of the captains uh, one of our center backs on defense and he trusts everybody on that defense and he just he he trusts all of them with the ball and we have a good lineup in the back so it's really good and then Evan Evan our uh, our, uh, our Shields, fr- one of our other freshmen yeah on the back right. He's killing it as well. He is. He really There's is. no complaints I hear from Evan whatsoever. He's one of our top recruits coming into mm-hmm. the season. Uh, so only positive from that outlook. Uh, what are your thoughts and your opinions on the captains this year with Josh Matt and Zach Hort and their play and how they've led the team? I mean, I think they're two phenomenal students that are in that are the leaders of the team, and they I think they, they lead in every single category, and it's been really cool to see them um, lead this team yeah. and, uh, you know, just – command the players out there and mm-hmm. i think that they've brought the soccer team closer together and that's been really cool to see that's really something cool about the maya soccer team uh for anyone who's been a part of the team a uh, player manager coach uh or uh, a witness of the team is the the community and the brotherhood that soccer team has always mm-hmm. had is is amazing 
and mm-hmm. it changes people's lives and it uh it, it brings people together and i i love it it's it's really awesome mm-hmm. and um they really have a positive impact on the community here at emmaus and they bring students together and really help uh, student athlete they are they are a true student athlete mm-hmm. in my opinion i am biased you know mm-hmm. being part of the soccer team in the past but uh no, I think the boys are really hungry for a win. Mm-hmm. You know, just coming off of a loss and a tie, and we have some big games this weekend, and we'll cover those later. Big games upcoming, yeah. But uh, honestly, a lot of positives, and one of the biggest highlights of the team, Christian Anderson. What do you got to say about him? Yeah, Christian coming in, um, very, very, very good soccer player. Um, he, I think, uh, he had a goal. I think our first game, and then. Um, Three games later, he scored four goals, four goals in the game against Ozark that we won eight to four. And that was the first time that someone has scored four goals in a game for Emmaus since 2019. Yeah. So it's cool. Like just some takeaways so far uh, from the season. Right now, Uredi is leading us in goals mm-hmm. with six. He had a hat trick against Barkley. And there's a lot of love behind Uredi. Mm-hmm. A lot of love He's, behind Uredi. Christian he, has five goals mm-hmm. and four assists. And James Baker has uh, four goals. Or Christian has five goals, sorry. James has two goals or four goals and Josh has two goals. Yeah. So a lot of offense this year. Last year the whole the team scored fourteen goals all season. They had mm-hmm. sixteen goals in the first three games. So yeah. very it's awesome to see this turnaround. Very so exciting shout team. Shout out to Coach watch. McHugh. Yeah. Great job, and Coach, Coach McHugh and Coach Eric. But very exciting team to watch. Mm-hmm. I love going to their games. They got a game this weekend. Looking forward to going to that one. It's Trinity from North Dakota. Yep. Mm-hmm. And like I said, uh, already a uh, good friend of mine, but also just l- everyone has his back on campus. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's been through a lot in, in life. And if you if you have it for students or alumni who might be coming on campus or uh, whatever, reach out, hear about his story. It's amazing. It is spectacular. He, uh, what the Lord has done in his life. It's, it's mm-hmm. crazy. Um, with his family coming from Africa, coming to the States, and then uh, – what he's been able to do th- from from there on out, mm-hmm. and uh, just how long it's taken him to get on the soccer field is incredible, and uh, just him being there and being able to score. Mm-hmm. I think he scored on in every game so far. Yeah, I think he has scored in every except game. one game. I think possibly, possibly, yeah, yeah. No, except one game, the uh, Manhattan game. He didn't score, but he it's it's just awesome, and mm-hmm. you know. You know, God bless him for his his skill and his story and what he's brought to Emmaus. But let's move on to some volleyball. Uh, volleyball's record. What's their record? Yeah, volleyball's zero and five this year. But I think the mm-hmm. way they're playing doesn't uh, pertain to all. their record. Um, this Not is a all. very very young team, and they have a lot of upside. And they are really building the foundations for this volleyball team to yes. get back to that national level that they were at uh, a few years ago. So we're really excited about. On this team and the players on it, and just keep keep playing hard and keep encouraging them, and mm-hmm. good things will happen. Yeah, who are the captains this year for the volleyball team? Um, they're not they're not doing captains. They're doing okay. like um like kind of like a a buddy system yeah. where like the upperclassmen are pairing with underclassmen. That's nice. As kind of like their uh like accountability and mm-hmm. motivational partners. So I know the Emma Barsness is on the team. She's one of the mm-hmm. upperclassmen. Yeah, we have four upperclassmen and four freshmen. Okay, so it's it's split 50-50, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of hype behind the team um, and a lot of growth to build a foundation f- uh, to get back to that national level of play that we've had a couple years mm-hmm. uh, a couple years ago uh, with just trying to bring in new recruits for next year and a year's coming and just building this team with the young talent mm-hmm. we do have. But um, Emma Barsness, she, if, if anyone knows about the Barsnesses, they're just a family of leaders. And she, all three brothers played soccer. Yeah, and <clears throat> she's done a great job of like being um, a good influence and uh, a good leader on this team. She's a little barrel this year. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just hear great things about her. So, mm-hmm. uh, but a big recruit coming into the season was Lauren Fessler. Mm-hmm. Can you can you tell me a little bit Shout about out her Tri State? Pl- yeah, Tri State Christian giving us a lot of their a lot of their players. Uh, yeah, Lauren Lauren's a, a great player. She's leading our team in like every statistical category right that's now. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and she's only a freshman. She's only a freshman, so so a lot to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Kind of building, hope not necessarily building the team around her, but building a team with her. You know, that's that's yeah. I think the key to anything. <clears throat> but uh, Coach Hannah Hannah Ricker is yeah, this is her first year um, being head coach of the program, and man, she is going to take this program places. She's yeah. the real deal. Her mm-hmm. and, her and Coach Megan, they are they're something special. So it's exciting to see them 
as they are going through this year and then as they continue to build on towards the years to come. Yeah, being part mm-hmm. of the admissions mm-hmm. and hearing about her, um, how she's coaching, as well as how she's trying to connect to all these other you know, Christian schools and mm-hmm. young players and, and, you know, volleyball aside, just kind of trying to get to know them mm-hmm. and trying to, you know, see what their relationship with uh, with Jesus is and try to help them and build that and mm-hmm. get them to Emmaus, you know, so that they can, they can play a sport that they love, but most importantly that they can grow their relationship with the Lord. Mm-hmm. So it's really awesome that she cares more about that. It really is. So <clears throat> what are some other highlights with uh, the Emmaus uh, athlete? Uh, women's volleyball team so they have a game upcoming for parents alumni weekend on friday against maranatha um so which is our first home game by the way i haven't had a home game yet it's true they're 0-5 on on the road so on the road they've been traveling a lot so it'd be nice to have some home games and and a lot of those a lot of those games on the road have been so close yeah been so close like they're like they are one or two sets away like well at most of their games they've lost sets by like three or four points yeah so they're right there and what, what were you telling me the other day um, from one of the coaches, uh, one of the rival from the rival schools. Oh yeah, one of the coaches uh, told Coach Hannah that he come postseason, he's a little worried about our Emmaus girls and the noise they can make. So it's really cool it's seeing really that, like hearing that from other coaches in our conference that are seeing the you know the potential, seeing the hard work in that. So that's really encouraging. That's what I like to hear. Mm-hmm. So we have, like you said, we have some games this weekend. First home game for the volleyball men's. Uh, not men's women's volleyball, uh, maybe men's volleyball one day. Yeah, so you know, a couple of years. I hope maybe. Uh, but women's volleyball first home game this weekend against a big school, and then uh, the men's soccer team also another game this weekend. And it's alumni weekend, it's so alumni we got a weekend. lot of people coming this weekend. And if you know anything about the women's volleyball team, I think it's the most electric uh, uh, fan section and just. Uh, uh, game atmosphere it's always Addie fun Mays. being it's so watching fun. volleyball in, in that atmosphere of our students and everything mm-hmm. it's it's there's there's chance for everything i just love it they get really involved and mm-hmm. um it really helps the girls out and they the student section from you know my years and even now they get to know the players you know we're, we're all they're all students mm-hmm. together so and man shout out all the alumni that are in yeah. the area that come and support our home games yeah, please appreciate do. you guys that it means a lot so it does and the great part is the Students know the players, you know, mm-hmm. because yeah. we're because of the community here at Emmaus. And with that with that relationship that we have with them, you you have nicknames for them and you find out like, hey, does this person like like it when you chant uh, uh, when they serve or do we be quiet? Like, what do we do? <laughs> like, so there's always <clears throat> there's fun always stuff like that. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's always fun with that going into it. But <clears throat> a lot of a lot of hype, a lot of. Uh, um, a lot of excitement, excitement lot for of this excitement. volleyball team, a lot of mm-hmm. growth. And I think we're going to get back to that national level of play and, you know, with uh, the leadership of uh, Coach Hannah and uh, Megan Bailey, the assistant coach. Now, let's talk about the, the the newest sport program, part of Emmaus Athletics, that has just caught fire on campus. You want to expect it. But what is it? It's cross country. cross country. So we add Emmaus added cross country last year. Last year was the inaugural season of the cross country team. And it was really cool to see um, the growth of um, the players or the runners from beginning to end. Um, we ended up having two national qualifiers, yeah. one for the guys, one for the girls. And it was really cool to see that success in the first year of the program. Yeah, they've been on fire. They've been electric and everyone has like gotten behind the team and the the, the runners. Um Brandon, one of the students who qualified for nationals for the men's cross country team, like he walks around with a glass of water. It's, it's pretty funny, and everyone's just like they love it. And they he's like, it. he's he's really cool. He's a, he's a cool guy. He he's quiet at first, but like just you get to know him, and he's he uh, he makes you smile. So uh, walks around with a glass of water. I I find that so funny. It's funny. like there's water bottles, you know, but <laughs> glass of water. He yeah. actually has a picture on their uh, their photo shoot day. Yeah, he did for media day. And he's it's just sitting, funny. sitting in, mm-hmm. in a chair with a glass of water. So that's super fun. Yeah, so it's cool because we've had two meets so far for cross country. Yeah. And um, the Spartan uh, Igniter and the which Fighting was Beat. In, like. Which was a local one in Dubuque. And then the other one was an hour and a half away. But mm-hmm. first race of the year, we had five people PR. Five. five set, a, set records, which awesome. is awesome. And we had three that qualified for nationals in their first race. First race. First race. And that was... And they're all freshmen. It was Anna Coniglio, Kate yep. Jensen, and Brandon and Hensler. It's incredible. They all qualified. How awesome is that? And, and then we ended yeah. up having, I think through the second race, um, we have seven that have PR'd this year. But that first meet 
was against all D three schools. Yeah, it was against all D three schools. So it was so like kind of similar competition level um, as we are, and so a lot of similarities. And then the second race was against an all NAI field. Yeah. And for those that don't yeah. know, um, the NAI realm of college athletics, they give out athletic scholarships. Mm -hmm. And Anna Coniglio, that race set the school record, finished tenth place against Shattered. an NAIA field. Tenth. tenth place. She beat our she beat the record set by Lydia Johnson, now Lydia Harris by over a minute. It's crazy. That's insane. And through three weeks in the NCCAA this year, she's the number one fastest runner. And she's Kate's the number three fastest runner. No, oh. And that meet, our girls qualified for the national tournament as a team. So let me get this right. In NCAA, our level of competition, D2, cross country, Anna Canigula is ranked one. She's ranked number one so far through and, three weeks. And Kate Jensen's ranked number three. three. Mm -hmm. And what grade are they in? Freshman. Oh, boy. <laughs> There's Nothing so much ups. excitement. Yeah. So much Shout excitement out Coach Girardi's out. Yes. Both yes. of them and just the they're killing the it. level they've made this program right away. Yeah. Right away. It all it takes is a couple a couple uh and even the hard work changers. that you know all the runners have put in mm -hmm. like over the summer and the season like they really want this. Yeah, like Kelsey, it's so cool to see. Shout out to Kelsey Polkrant. She talk about her Yeah, for shout a out to Kelsey. She shaved off 11 minutes of her time from last year which is impressive. And she is like a minute and a half off of the qualifying nationals time as an individual, as an individual, like the which amount of work insane. that she's put in to go from where she was last year to now. Mm -hmm. It's insane. Middle, get, middle of the pack to the top of the to, pack to, yeah, the being, of the pack. to qualifying for nationals. Like she's right there, which is awesome. She's been working hard in the summer and mm -hmm. you know, you can see it by the numbers that she's putting up and, mm -hmm. uh, the cross country team is really fun to watch. I'm like, I'm leaving for work and they're just, I just see them running around and, you know, if you didn't know anything about the Dubuque, everybody runs, everyone here. runs in Dubuque, you know, and you know, the road right in front of Emmaus is packed with runners. I don't think you can be out there for a minute without seeing someone run by. <laughs> yeah. So that's really fun. So we fit in really well and there's a lot of excitement behind this team. And you know, the first race was just mind blowing. The second race was like, what in the world? Like this team is legit and they have a next race in, what next week? It's next week, yeah. Next Saturday, and we can you, we can talk about. So watch out uh, for the Emmaus cross country team. Yeah, Emmaus especially cross -country. the women's team. Oh yeah, they're and they're, all the women's qualified. Yeah, they nationals. qualified as a team, so I think all seven of them can yeah. run with. Yeah, with a uh, what was the, what's the final time. time for the team? Uh, it was two hours and three minutes, three minutes and something yeah, like forty yeah. seconds because they like had that. two hours and ten minutes, and then they shaved off seven minutes to go mm -hmm. into the second meet. Yeah, and which everyone is insane. The thing is, when when you have someone. Uh, when you have players who are, you know, at that level of competition to be qualifying individually, it pushes everybody else. It does. So I've only seen everybody else on that team work hard. I mm -hmm. see them running like every morning and even afternoon, not even at practice. They're just running, trying to get better. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's and the fact encouraging. that Anna ran a sub 22, she ran 22, 33. Yeah. That's fast. That's and that's in her second race. So mm -hmm. she's just going to go up from here for sure. So we have a couple games this weekend, like we mentioned before, um, but it's just some upcoming games with uh, the men's soccer team. Saturday, 24th, we, this Saturday, Alumni Weekend, we play Trinity Bible at home. Uh -huh. Don't know much about Trinity. Uh, we never played them in soccer. They They're just soccer. restarted their soccer team. Just restarted this, the this program. Past year, so. Next Thursday, we'll play Maranatha Baptist, at and Maranatha. We'll, be, we'll be at Maranatha. Mm -hmm. We've never been in Maranatha at their home. We've come close many times, and... Um, all there's so much excuse that we can have excuses we can use and uh, things that happen. People are away on trips, but uh, th I think this is a team that can do it. Um, and then next Saturday they play Moody home, home. and that those are always fun games against Moody. And Coach McHugh used to coach Moody, and he he's a national uh, winning, national champion, national, national champion coach. coach. Of the year. So playing against his old team, and so that's always fun to watch. Mm -hmm. For uh, women's volleyball, we got this four Friday. home games finally. Four. four back to back to back to back, and that's against Maranatha this Friday, and then next week on Monday and Thursday, Faith and Grace Christian, and then next Saturday, Moody. So Moody makes a trip out here to play both men's soccer and women's volleyball, and then the cross country meet, the Dan Huston invite, Saturday, October first. So a lot to look forward to in this 
this weekend and all of next week. A lot of games. We're halfway through the season, pretty much. We're gonna try to bring you this podcast. We're in crunch time. Yeah, we're gonna try to bring you this podcast uh, as much as we can, hopefully weekly. So tune in to uh, the Emmaus Athletic page. Uh, yeah, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, mm-hmm. Instagram. Stay up to date on our website with all the latest uh, game schedules and updates and everything. Subscribe so. to YouTube and everything. Yeah, uh, all, all our all our home stuff is live streamed on YouTube. So, yeah. and if you are a if you are Interested in coming to Emmaus, visiting Emmaus, or you know someone who uh, you want to get here uh, at Emmaus sports, uh, for sports, for an athlete or not, uh, come to f- find our website, visit us, Go see what's be- going on. Look to be uh, becoming an Eagle. It's, yeah. our, it's our recruiting form you can fill out and get in contact with coaches and see if this is the yeah. place for you. Talk to players. We have mm-hmm. an event coming up, due weekend. Yeah, due weekend. We got one uh, coming up the 6th through 8th of October and then yeah. one again in the spring in uh, I think it's mid-March yeah so a great time to uh, experience Emmaus see what it's like that that event actually is it's what really, awesome. uh, really helped me um, decide well obviously really? the Lord brought me here yeah. but do really that was you. a huge impact on wanting to be here and, and Emmaus has I'm just so changed you since it. oh and you found your wife here I did my man mm-hmm. <laughs> so uh, come to do if you got get your youth groups involved bring your friends uh, you know uh, reach out to your local churches and you know tell them about do and sign up register uh it's a it's great college great experience event. Mm-hmm. you get an experience you get to live as a student mm-hmm. for a couple of days and it's really awesome you live in the dorms hang out go to with classes, the students go, go to, to class, chapel go to the games mm-hmm. so uh, a lot of stuff to do there uh visit our page athletic forum fill that out i uh, want to give a little shout out to concerning him podcast um, who is our, our sponsor for uh, this podcast as well mostly because they control this studio but Really awesome podcast that has full a lot of lots of great stuff. So much good stuff. I was in great, the, yeah. great podcasts, great articles, mm-hmm. like full of amazing, helpful, useful, yeah. practical stuff. Interview they interview the students, professors, uh, uh, visiting uh, speakers, just about what is concerning him. You mm-hmm. know, so all it's, the things concerning himself. It's true, and it's a really great podcast just uh, for information and just uh, hear about what God is doing in people's lives and uh, their thoughts on uh, different issues in the world. So I was actually in the uh, Dominican Republic this summer and there's people talking about uh, our podcast concerning him and they've listened to it. So it was really awesome and encouraging, but check all that stuff out. Please tune in uh, in the following weeks. Just keep, keep update with our uh, social media and whenever we'll drop this video and join us on our road to Emmaus. Yeah. Have a good day. See you.